So we have a lot of different generations here tonight, which makes me very happy because the generations right now, if you look on social media or in the news, generations are fighting amongst themselves for some reason. So it's confusing sometimes to know which generation you're in and who you're supposed to be mad at for whatever reason. So I'm here to help y'all tonight. Our oldest generation right now is called the Silent Generation. Uh, these people were born between the 1920s and 1940s. They're called the Silent Generation because when they were children, they were to be seen and not heard. These are people like my in-laws who are in their 90s, and um, these are the people that still cook with lard and are concerned about safety around a microwave oven. <laughs> I love my in-laws. They've been married for 63 years, and apparently if you've been married that long, you no longer have the ability to hear the sound of the other person's voice. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They have two separate conversations with me when I go to their house. Two completely separate conversations, and I go back and forth because I don't want to be rude. They're lovely people, but it's like having a conversation with somebody with a lazy eye. You don't know which is the right one. <laughs> you don't know. The next generation down are the baby boomers. The baby boomers were born between the 1940s and mid 60s. Baby boomers! Y'all are awesome. The baby boomers perfected smoking. <laughs> Yay, smoking. These are my mom's people. My mom is an, is an older boomer, but they love to smoke. They smoked at home. They smoked at church. They smoked in restaurants between bites of food. And they smoked in the car with their children in the back seat with the windows rolled up tightly. Now, for whatever reason, the boomers hate millennials. They hate millennials. And to be fair, everyone hates millennials. <laughs> I think it's because they invented avocado toast. <laughs> or the word artisanal. It's not fair. Millennials, it's not fair. It's not your fault that you suck. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. Your Star Wars has Jar Jar Binks in it, and there's no coming back from that. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Now, below the millennials are Gen Z. These are my kids. Um, good luck, America. <laughs> Gen Z doesn't know how to write a check. They don't know how to read cursive. They don't know how to address an envelope. They don't know how to read a paper map. They can't get anywhere unless there's like a GPS on their phone. And before you tell me I should have taught my kids all these things, let me just tell you this. If Gen Z takes over the world, it's gonna be real easy to get it back. <laughs> We're just gonna write our battle plans in cursive on a piece of paper. <laughs> super easy. And then mail it to ourselves in envelopes. <laughs> so did I forget anybody? Gen X, Gen X, yes. I didn't forget Gen X, because I'm the first year of Gen X, but everyone seems to forget Gen X. Last year, CBS News forgot Gen X. They did this thing about all the generations, and they did silent generation, boomers, and then they just skipped over 65 million of us Jan Bradys, and they went down to the millennials and the post-millennials. But here's all you need to know about Gen X. We don't care. <laughs> We don't care. As a matter of fact, we kind of like it. We're like the secret dive bar that only the locals go to. <laughs> we don't advertise, but we'll never go out of business. That is us. We laid out in the sun with no sunscreen on giant sheets of aluminum foil <laughs> with baby oil and iodine. We sprayed sun in, in our hair. We turned it orange. We don't care. We are the latchkey kids that sat in the way, way back seat of our mom's station wagon, rear facing at the people behind us. Just waving. 
just waving, just waving. Just waving. Nobody wore a seatbelt, not even in the front seat. If your mom's arm wasn't strong enough, you deserve to go through the windshield. We didn't have helicopter parents back then. In fact, we had the opposite of helicopter parents. We had Home Depot parents, where you think there should be someone working in the store there that could help you. But there is no one around. You are on your own. This is Home Depot. Do you need a skill saw where there's only one left in the whole store and it's way up there on that third level? Grab yourself a ladder, my friend, and start climbing up there. Don't pull it over on yourself and cut your arm off because no one's going to take you to the hospital. Here's what you get. Suck it up. Blow on it. Walk it off. Rub some dirt on it. Don't bleed on the carpet. Welcome to Home Depot. <laughs> Nobody cared if we were bored. Nobody cared what our grades were. Nobody cared that we were eating lunch out of a lunchbox that was filled with rust. <laughs> Did y'all have a rusty Holly Hobby lunchbox too? Nobody cared that we were being pummeled in the face by real red rubber dodgeballs. <laughs> the real red ones that smelled like rubber. Not the little foamy ones that they have now, the little baby ones. The real red rubber ones that went twang when they hit you in the face. <laughs> and they left a crosshatch print right on your forehead. <laughs> Nobody cared. No one came to our athletic practices. Nobody brought sliced oranges. <laughs> and certainly no one was arranging a play date for us. Here's how my mom arranged a play date back then. At eight o'clock in the morning, my mom would say to us, y'all, go outside and play. Boom, she would lock the door. We were outside all day. We didn't have anything to eat. We didn't have anything to drink. We didn't have a juice box or any goldfish crackers or a little box of raisins. When we were thirsty, what did we drink out of? The hose. Hose drinkers unite. Never going out of business. And what were we doing outside in the yard all day? Well, we were trying to kill each other. <laughs> we had rock fights. We had dirt clawed fights. We had green pine cone fights. And we had BB gun fights. <laughs> we were shooting each other with BB guns on purpose and our parents knew it and they didn't care. But there were some rules. There were rules, right? Three pumps max. <laughs> right? If you were good, you could get four in and no one saw you. <laughs> no intentional headshots. <laughs> and on special holidays, we would ramp up to things like bottle rocket wars and Roman candle wars. And all my dad ever said was, don't shoot each other directly in the face. <laughs> We're never going out of business. We would make bike ramps, evil Knievel ramps, out of cinder blocks and plywood that we found in the garage that had nails sticking up out of it. <laughs> Nobody wore a bike helmet. No one wore a bike helmet. We're all still here. Now, occasionally my mom would say, hey, I will give y'all some candy money to go down to the store if you will bring me back some cigarettes. cigarettes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was nine years old. I could go to the store and say, I'd like to buy a carton of Mer Menthol 100 Ultra Lights, please. <laughs> and they would sell them to me. Now, eventually they had, they had to have a note. <laughs> 
So my mom would write a note, dear store, sell my child cigarettes, love mom. That was it. That was it. She would give us the money, she'd slide it under the screen door, she was not letting us back in the house. We were not coming back in that house. She was inside watching Dark Shadows. We were not allowed in there. <laughs> Barnabas Collins. <laughs> and we would leave our yard unattended with no adult supervision or bubble wrap or helmets. And we would go miles and miles down to the store to get my mom's cigarettes and our candy cigarettes while we were there. <laughs> Oh, weren't they awesome? There were two different kinds of candy cigarettes. There was the one, the hard white stick, right? It had red on the end because someone painted fire on there for us to eat. <laughs> and then there were the bubblegum kinds. And you could pull it out of that package and blow real smoke. <laughs> I just... <sighs> You could get two or three good drags of real smoke. <sighs> so we would stand out in front of the Handy Andy store wearing our candy jewelry. <sighs> Smoking our candy cigarettes doing what we had to do to survive the mean streets of Athens, Georgia. <laughs> Until it got dark and the street lights came on, which was our signal for you better be home or you are in trouble. But we're all still here and we are never going out of business. 